SQL Loader and Global Temporary Tables. I want to use SQL Loader to load some data into a temporary table, but it immediately, it immediately errors out, is there any workaround? Now, when this question came up, uh, I, I was quite confused because a temporary table is something that you load data into it, and when your session ceases to exist, the temporary table is gone. So if you're running SQL Loader to load data into a temporary table, the moment SQL Loader finishes loading, the data is gone. It, it seems a very odd requirement, and I think that's why SQL Loader just goes, this makes no sense. Why do you want to load into a temporary table? After further investigation, uh, there is a, a legitimate reason why someone may want to do this. Before I say that, I would recommend generally if you are running SQL Loader in what I call niche circumstances, whether it's into temporary tables or has particular requirements that means you have to sort of um, perturbate what you're doing with SQL Loader, take a look at external tables. They're sort of deemed the replacement of SQL Loader and you just get a lot more functionality and power. But let's see what we can do in terms of SQL Loader into a temporary table. So I'm going to create a user called demo as just a DBA user. I'm just being lazy just so we can do our stuff in this user called demo. Let's create it. And let's create a global temporary table called emp, which is on commit preserve rows. So I'm doing my best to at least hang on to the rows as long as I can as select star from scott.emp. And here I've pre-created an emp.ctl file, which SQL Loader would use to simply load in the standard data that we get from scott.emp. So fields terminated by a comma, and you can see it's just comma separated with the standard format. Let's fire up SQL Loader. And as our customer reported, it immediately stops and says, you can't do that. It's a temporary table. Now, the question is why? Uh, on further explanation is like, you know, we still haven't answered why someone would want to do this. Well, as you know, what you can do inside SQL Loader in the control file has plenty of power, but it's not, it's not as flexible as SQL. So you can do things like load when, and you can do a few expressions on the columns, but that's pretty much it. In this particular case, when you're trying to answer the but why, it turned out that one of the use cases that you might want to do is you might have a table called some target table. And that's ultimately the, the final resting place for the data that you're trying to load. But you've got a lot of stuff you want to do to this data as it comes in that SQL Loader is not equipped for. That's why an external table may be a cool idea. But if that's not available or you have a lot of SQL Loader floating around in your existing system, well, one way you could do is do something like this. If I could load into a global temporary table, I'm not actually after the data to end up in there. What I'm really using it as a staging area to apply some logic to pump it into my true target table. So in this case, all I really want to do is as the data is coming into my employee table, my global temporary table, what I really want to do is do some conditions. Like if the new salary is greater than a you know, thousand, then do a query, check the Scott department table. If it's there, then do this and you know, add a new column, do some, you know, some logic. Some of this I could do with a SQL loader control file, but most of this logic I could not. And so it's this two-phase process. I'm using SQL Loader to get the, the flat file into, the, into a database, but then I want to use a trigger in the database to move the data to its true destination. I don't really care about the EMP table, and that's why I want to do it as a global temporary table. I understand the motivation for doing this now, that there actually is a particular use case where I actually aren't interested in what I'm SQL Loadering into. I'm actually interested in, into the next step, which is my target table. So can I do it? Yes, you can with a little bit of trickery. Take your global temporary table and rename it. In this case, I, I could have dropped it, I've thrown it away. Now I'm creating a view, a select star from my global temporary table. So I have a view called emp that's now select from my global temporary table. Dropping my trigger on the employee table and recreating that trigger as an instead of trigger on the view with the exact same logic. There's nothing changed there. It's interesting, you cannot SQL load it into a global temporary table, but you can SQL load it into a view. So now I run SQL loader. I'm running the exact same control file. You can see it said I loaded 14 rows into my table, but in reality, those rows went into the view, fired the trigger, got obviously ignored in the view, and then certain rows, in fact, 12 rows of the 14, made their final destination or final resting place of the target table. So if you do need to run SQL Loader into a, I'll call it a fake table because you wanted to run a trigger to do some more sophisticated logic to get it into a final table, global temporary tables are out, but a view, which almost seems counterintuitive or you know, a contradiction, a view can be used to SQL Loader into and you can work around the problem. <laughs>